Hi, today I am going to show you how to draw the phasor diagram of the Anderson Bridge. As we know, the Anderson Bridge is used for the precise measurement of inductance over a wide range, and the equation is coming like this L1 equals to CR2 R4 R into R3 plus R4 into plus R3 into R4. So, why this, what is this R L1 R1? I'll show you right now. I'll draw the diagram of uh, the Anderson bridge or the circuit diagram how it looks like actually the first bridge the first arm of this bridge is having one register with the resistance R1 and one inductor having a the inductance of L1 the next arm having the resistance of R2 and here the third arm having a resistance of R3 whereas the fourth arm is having the resistance of R4 and if I give the name of all the forums like this A, B, C and D. So across this C and D one resistance and be named as small r and one capacitor having capacitor of C has been placed here. Now as this is the AC bridge, so across these two point, one detector D is being placed. Detector D is being placed, and through these two point A and C, we are giving a supply voltage of. V. So as we are giving the voltage of these uh, two points as V, so there is the voltage across the A and C will be V, and voltage across the ADC and ABC will be the voltage of V. So now, if we Consider that the drop across this point A and B is V1 and drop across this B and C is V2. So if I say draw it like this, so it will be clear that if I consider that V1 is the drop across this one, V2 is the drop across this point, V3 is the drop across this point a, a and D and V4 is the drop across that these two points. So now the next is the current flowing through this circuit. The current flowing through this circuit is that this point it is I1, this is I2, this is I3 and this I3 is getting divided into two, two parts. One is named as the I4 and another is named as the IC. So here we can say that this I3 is been divided as that IC plus I4. And at the balance condition, what is what will be happening there? The balance condition, these two point voltage will remain same. These two point EM, uh, potential difference will be remain same. So at the balance condition, uh, this V2 and the voltage across this point. So let it give a name and it is be there F. If FC voltage drop across FC and voltage drop across BC will be remaining same, and the voltage across this V4 that the VDC will be the voltage drop across this small r 
resistance and voltage drop across this capacitor so voltage drop across this one and voltage drop across this one will be addition of this v4 so that will be the phaser and before starting this i want to give you an idea about how to remember how to remember that when the voltage will be leading and lagging for the capacitive and the inductive current so if you can remember the simple word civil simple word civil so you can find out that here two parts are there one is related to c and another part is related to l so for the capacitor the current will be leading for the capacitor this current will be leading voltage will be lagging and for the inductor the voltage will be leading and current will be lagging let's draw the phaser for this uh, anderson bridge and this is the circuit circuit that already we have drawn so coming to the phaser diagram or the vector diagram the anderson bridge if we consider if we consider that this is the resistive current and it is it is i1 as we have considered here so this i1 r1 this will be in the same phase the voltage of for the resistance will be the same phase where if as the inductor as the inductor is having here and the current is flowing through this circuit of ab so so the inductive reactance will be the xl1 and the voltage drop across this will be leading as i have told you that the voltage of the inductive voltage will be always leading with respect to the resistive voltage or resistive current so now this is the factor that is i1 xl1 so these two voltage drop across this one and across this one so addition of these two voltage will be the resultant voltage and this is nothing but your v1 it is clear now now these two voltage will be v1 so the next voltage drop is the v2 and as it is also the same resistive voltage so this will be the same phase so i2 r2 will be the same phase and this is nothing but your v2 so now what is this the v1 and v2 the addition of these two is the voltage v so if i add these two voltage or if i add these two vector actually so these two vector will give you the resultant voltage of v this will give you the resultant voltage of v now coming to the next part that what i have told you that here we are having a capacitor and it is the current um, through the capacitor so current through the capacitor will be leading with respect to the resistive current that already i have told you that capacitor current will be leading leading with respect to the resistive uh, current so here the capacitive current is leading through the with respect to the resistive current and and the resistive voltage this voltage drop across this capacitive current will be what that is the ic into r ic into r so this is the voltage drop across this one and what is this voltage voltage drop across this capacitor is nothing but the voltage drop across this bc and voltage drop across this fc will be same at the uh, uh, time of the balance so that is nothing but your vc v2 and we can call it as the ic and the capacitive reactance xc so this is the voltage drop across this 
capacitor okay so now if we can draw these two figure so uh, what we'll find out that the addition of these two will be the v4 so now i am just adding this to v, v2 and it is the that means the voltage drop capacitor and resistive drop across this one so these two will give you the resultant of your v4 so as this is the v4 the current voltage drop across this v4 is i4 into r4 so this is what the direction of i4 this is what the direction of ic and here i have told you that i3 is the addition of this ic and i4 so this is the uh, the additions of this ic and i4 so now what we have to do we have to take the resultant of these two and this is resultant of these two and the resultant is what we can find out this is the i3 this is the i3 so this i3 the voltage drop across this one is the v3 and that is nothing but your i3 into r3 so here the voltage drop across this one is v3 and that is nothing but your i3 into r3 the same thing i3 into r3 is here so this is the v3 and this is the v4 so v4 and v3 these two voltage is nothing but the voltage as v so now if we just add these two vector if we just add these two vectors so you can find out it is also the v so this is nothing uh, but what we are getting the vector diagram or the phasor diagram of the anderson bridge thank you very